Okay, so today we are going to talk about gastroesophageal reflux disease, simply GERD. When a patient comes to you with the complaint of heartburn, sore throat, metallic taste in mouth, or even chronic cough, and you suspect that this patient has GERD, the first thing that you need to see is whether there are alarm signs and symptoms or not. What are those alarm signs and symptoms that you have to look for? If patient's age is greater than 50, if there's anemia, if there's weight loss, if there's dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, or dinophagia, painful swallowing, or there's continuous vomiting, or patient has history of peptic ulcer disease. These are the alarm signs and symptoms that you have to look for. And if they are absent, then you do not need to do any investigation for GERD. You directly go for an empiric therapy. What you do in empiric therapy is you give a PPI proton pump inhibitor trial for six weeks because proton pump inhibitor inhibit acid production with once daily dosage with lifestyle changes. If alarm signs and symptoms are there, if alarm signs and symptoms are present, then you have to go for endoscopy directly. So if a patient comes to you with a complaint of GERD, you have to see these alarm signs and symptoms. If they are present, you have to directly go for endoscopy. If they are absent, you give a PPI trial, once daily dosage with lifestyle changes. Now, if this patient comes back to you and says that he did not improve, a patient does not improve. Now, you have to increase dosage of PPI and you give PPI for six with, with twice daily dosage. You do not go for any investigation directly again. You give, you increase the dosage of PPI. Now, if patient improves, you continue the same treatment. And if patient does not improve, now is the time that you have to go for investigation because this patient did not improve with two empiric therapies of PPI. What you do in investigation is you go for endoscopy. And the most accurate test for GERD is basically 24 hour pH monitoring. In 24 hour pH monitoring, what you do is you put a monitor in the esophagus and you detect the changes in pH. If pH is too low, it means that there is gastroesophageal reflux in es esophagus. So it is the most accurate test. If patient has alarm signs and symptoms and you directly go for endoscopy, you can find four things. Either there will be no findings on biopsy and you will say that this is simple GERD. You can go for proton pump inhibitor treatment because you found out nothing in biopsy. There were no changes or you can find Barrett's esophagus. What is Barrett's esophagus? Normally, uh, epithelium in the lower esophageal sphincter is a stratified squamous epithelium. Whenever there is chronic acid reflux in esophagus, that lower esophageal epithelium, it changes from stratified squamous epithelium to simple columnar epithelium of stomach and duodenum. Because that stratified squamous epithelium cannot bear the brunt of this acid. So it shifts its uh, form to simple columnar epithelium to adapt to those acidic environments. That patient who has a Barrett's esophagus is prone to get cancer. So this is a picture showing Barrett's esophagus. This is normal epithelium. This is normal stratified squamous epithelium. And if you look at this side, this side has changed. This is simple columnar epithelium of stomach and duodenum, which is there in esophagus now. This is another picture showing simple columnar epithelium in esophagus. If you see these white spots, these white spots, spots are basically goblet cells. These goblet cells are normally not present in esophagus. They are found in stomach. They are found in duodenum. It means that there is change in epithelium in the lower esophageal part. Now, if you found that the, this patient has Barrett esophagus and there is change in epithelium, what you go for is you do PPI therapy because if you control this acid reflux, you can revert this back to a normal esophagus. You can revert this change with control of acid. Then there is another patient in which you do biopsy and you find dysplasia. What is dysplasia? Dysplasia is basically a step ahead from Barrett's esophagus. This patient is now having cancerous changes in his epithelium. The epithelium of lower esophagus is now precancerous. This is a picture showing dysplasia 
and if you see the nuclei are very large large spheroidal nuclei increase nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and you see these atypical mit mitotic figures in uh, dysplasia this is a precancerous lesion it can any time convert to a cancer so treatment of dysplasia we do not want dysplasia in esophagus so what we do is we burn that dysplastic tissue we remove that we resect that with radio frequency ablation photodynamic therapy or resection so that there is no increased risk for conversion to cancer other than that you also control acid with proton pump inhibitors now there is another patient another unlucky patient who came to you with the complaint of gerd and you did endoscopy and biopsy and on biopsy you found that there is adenocarcinoma this is cancer what you do in cancer is you stage and grade it and then you go for surgery chemotherapy with 5fu and radiation so if alarm sign and symptoms are there you directly go for endoscopy and what you find on endoscopy is maybe a simple gerd no prominent findings so you go for a ppi treatment if there is barrett's esophagus conversion of stratified squamous epithelium to columnar epithelium it's barrett's esophagus and you treat it with proton pump inhibitors and then sometimes you can find dysplasia what is dysplasia dysplasia is basically a precancerous lesion and then you remove that tissue you radio ablate it you burn it and you give proton pump inhibitors and if you find cancer then you have to stage it grade it and you have to surgically remove it with chemotherapy 5 fluorouracil with radiation now if patient is having barrett's esophagus or dysplasia both of these two are not cancer but they predispose patient to cancer so they can any time convert into a cancerous form so there is a risk to counter that risk what we do is we screen patient these patients we screen barrett's esophagus with endoscopy we screen dysplasia with endoscopy and what is the schedule of screening in barrett's esophagus there is a lower risk so you screen patient every 3 years and in dysplasia there is higher risk because it is a precancerous form you screen patient annually with endoscopy now a patient with gerd comes back to you that either he did not tolerate proton pump inhibitors or he did not respond to your treatment or the, the patient wants surgery a permanent solution for this thing so what you do in such patients is you go, do motility studies and you you measure the strength of lower esophageal sphincter how loose it is and then you do nissen fundoplication what you do in nissen fundoplication is you basically take a part of stomach and you wrap it around esophagus and a create a false lower esophageal sphincter but the side effect of nissen fundoplication is that sometimes this this lower esophageal sphincter gets too tight and it results in dysphagia instead of reflux disease so if a patient comes you cannot tolerate ppi patient does not respond to your treatment or patient opts for surgery you do motility study and you do nissen fundoplication for it what patient can do in lifestyle changes to control the symptom of gerd is to lose weight obesity has high association with reflux disease so losing weight will have good impact on gerd head elevation is very important because it keeps the acid in stomach and prevents reflux avoid meal 2 to 3 hours before bed time so that there is ample time for digestion of meal to reduce reflux avoid anything that triggers acid reflux especially caffeine and alcohol you are putting patient on the chronic treatment of ppi so you must know the side effects that a patient can develop it causes osteoporosis because there is calcium malabsorption a patient on ppi is predisposed to develop aspiration pneumonia because when you change the ph of stomach with ppis you predispose it to change in normal flora because all those acid labile bacteria that were dead because of acid high acid can now grow easily and that changes the normal flora and that change in normal flora can cause aspiration pneumonia same goes for clostridium difficile infection due to change in acid there is change in flora resulting in c diff infection and ppis are a inhibitor of enzyme p450 so all those drugs which are metabolized by 
and Zyme P450 increase serum concentration due to PPI, especially warfarin and phenytoin. What are the complications that a patient of GERD can develop in the longer run if left untreated? It can worsen asthma symptoms. It can cause dental erosions because acid reflux chelates calcium in teeth and resulting in dental erosion. It can cause inflammation of esophagus resulting in esophagitis. It can cause stricture formation in the lower esophageal sphincter because there is that acid damages lower esophageal sphincter and that the fibrosis and inflammation causes stricture formation. And it can at the end result in adenocarcinoma cancer of esophagus. So I have talked about stricture and adenocarcinoma of esophagus in detail in my video on dysphagia. In summary, if a patient comes to you with the complaint of GERD, the first thing that you need to see is whether the, this patient has alarm sign and symptoms or not. If the alarm sign and symptoms are not there, you give PPI trial with lifestyle changes. And if patient does not improve, you increase the dosage and you again give that trial. If patient improves, you continue the treatment. If patient does not improve, you go for endoscopy and the most accurate test 24 hour pH monitoring. If there are alarm sign and symptoms, then you directly go for endoscopy and in the endoscopy, you can find four things. If it is simple GERD, you treat it with PPI. If you find Barrett's esophagus change in stratified squamous epithelium to simple columnar epithelium of esophagus and duodenum, it means this is Barrett's esophagus and you give PPIs and you try to revert it back to normal form. If it is dysplasia, then it means that there is high risk that it can convert into cancer. Dysplasia is a precancerous lesion. You remove it, you resect it, you burn it. And both Barrett's esophagus and dysplasia are followed up with endoscopy. If, if there's cancer, then you have to go for surgery, chemotherapy with 5-fluorouracil with radiation. So this is GERD. Thank you very much.